Hi, welcome to Brionis Pickleball, and in today's video, we are going to be doing a point breakdown of a 5-0 pickleball point. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Now, let's jump right in. All right, so this is going to be a breakdown of a high level point, including myself. First, what we're going to do is watch the entire point together, and then we will be slowing it down with multiple camera angles, breaking the point down. On this YouTube channel, we do a lot of breakdowns like this and also a lot of pickleball instructional videos. So make sure you subscribe and now let's watch it. All right, so here we go. We have my friends Joe in the black shirt on the far side and Craig in the gray shirt. And on my side, that is me and my friend Pessa. He's a lefty, as you can tell here. So now we're gonna jump right into it. You can see here, Joe hits a really good deep serve here and Pessa returns it fairly deep here. And you can see him following it up to the net. This is a really important thing after you're returning, especially in doubles. You can see he gets really close or right up to the non-volley zone line as Craig is trying to hit his third shot drop right here. One thing I want to back it up really quick. As this serve is coming and it's landing, look at my body position and also where I'm looking. Okay, this is really important. A couple reasons why is I can kind of see it off of his paddle where he's going to go down the line or cross court. So that can definitely affect where I position myself after his return. And also I'm looking for the quality of the return, right? Like how much pace, um, how aggressive it is, or if uh, it's a really weak return, then I really have to be on the defense. So this is a really important thing to do when your partner is returning. Now we're going to discuss one of the big pickleball myths here and that is the third shot drop so i just want you to see this drop here let's play it out this was a very very well placed drop it really can't get better than this you can see craig gets really low he's lifting up with a low to high motion and you can see this third shot drop clear the net by a good margin and the most important thing here is that drop is landing down forcing a low contact now look how close to the line this is we can see in this angle here it is an inch from the line look at my position here it's really forcing me into a half volley so this is a really good drop and one thing that players will tell you is your drops have to be very short into the kitchen it's actually the opposite in higher level play you will see that the effective drops are the drops just like this one as it's descending down and dipping down right towards my feet so here we go. You can see Joe and Craig both come in on that ball because they, they know it's a good ball. It's right on my feet and I'm forced to just hit a dink. So here we go. Craig sets up for his backhand dink here and we have a couple exchanges here. Notice how we are both moving our feet and sliding or shuffle stepping to the side here. This is a really good dink. It really pulls me out wide, but I get into position pretty early and look how far I am off the court. I gotta really make sure I hit a good ball back. And right now the middle is exposed. Now, Pessa could slide over a little bit, but you know, at this level, he's expecting me to hit a good ball here. And just seeing how wide it was here, I go back to Craig here, to his backhand, and I hit a good ball. But just looking at this again, I would have probably sent this more middle. If I would have popped this up at all, then we would have a big or large gap exposed between me and Pesa. So um, looking at this again, I probably should have taken this wide ball and hit it middle. But I decided to go cross court again to his backhand. And fortunately, I keep it low. So here we go. Craig makes another good unattackable dink and here um, you'll see this in higher level play a lot I'm trying to create something with my forehand so I kind of create some space 
run around my backhand, try to create something. This is a nice low ball, so what do I do? I just go right back to the backhand side. Now, Craig does a good job of leaning in, and you can see him take this ball out of the air, take time away from me. Look at his body position is very low. His center of gravity is low, and he's balanced. And here, it pulls me out again. You can see not as wide as the first one, but this one pulls me out. And you can see now, I choose to change the direction of the ball. So the change of direction here, you can see I go right towards the middle of the court. And this is a very, very good shot. Um, it's a shot that's used at the highest levels all the time. So when you are getting an outside ball or a ball from the outside of the court and you're trying to change directions, just go right down the middle. And you can see my placement here is perfect. The ball is low to Joe's backhand. So this is what we call dinking to the inside foot um, and this in this case Joe's inside foot would be his left foot because it's inside towards the middle of the court and you can see Joe just lifts it right to Pess's backhand so it's really really good play for Joe he knows where to keep the ball and push the ball here Pessa gets low Pess is in good position to hitting this cross court ball now we go to here and this is where the first attack is kind of initiated um, in this point. We have a cross-court ball from Pessa, and it's coming to Joe's forehand here. And you can see here, I don't know, I'm not sure what Joe was trying to do here. Joe, maybe you can leave a comment below in the comments. But he's just trying to change the direction. So not a bad shot, but he's taking a cross-court ball, trying to put it down the line. But you can see he lifts it up slightly here. So this is the first opportunity now, and I see it right here. Um, and I'm going to hit a swinging volley. You can see my paddle head drop down, okay? So this is a big indicator at, at, at higher levels when you see somebody drop their paddle head down. And by paddle head, you can see uh, my paddle is faced towards the ground, and I'm going to be swinging up on this ball. So just really quick, in this position, right here as I'm going to hit this swinging volley backhand, look at everyone's paddle position, okay? Everyone is around knee to waist level uh, or belly button level and, and everyone's paddle is not that high. So look at um, Joe's position really low, look at Craig's and even Pessa's on my side, okay? So the myth that you have to have your paddle up really high is definitely not shown here. Um, especially when you pop up the ball, you want to have your paddle in a lower position because better players are going to speed that ball up as low as possible. So here we go. And I just want to show you where my first attack goes. As I initiate this ball and attack, it goes to the dominant side of Joe. Okay, so this is one of the toughest spots to, to defend. And you know, some players call this the chicken wing. So in higher level play, um, you can see as I'm going to hit this ball here, Joe sets up on his backhand. And this is why at higher levels, attacking to that dominant side can cause some problems. So here you can see Joe kind of coming up a little bit and trying to defend that with his backhand side. So really good attack. And, you know, he gets it back. And then what am I doing? I'm looking for another ball. So immediately I'm looking to attack again. And here is a really interesting thing here. You can see Joe see his ball pop up slightly and he retreats back, takes a step back and notice his footwork and his paddle positioning and his body positioning here, his footwork. So he takes a step back, he split steps and look at this low position. He, his paddle is dropped down, his paddle head. He's in the backhand position here and he's in a good low wide stance. His center of gravity is low. This is a perfect position when you're defending and you can see here he hits a perfect reset and down to to Pessa now and Pessa realizes that they are now back so he can hit it to either Joe or Craig and since they are back and they're kind of in the transition zone Pessa is looking for another opportunity to attack so you can see here he kind of speeds it up at Craig here and I just want you to see this response from Craig. Craig hits this really perfect reset shot here. As this ball's coming, Craig sets his feet and look at his body position. Ball's out in front, contact is good, he's nice and low. And you can see here as he resets this ball, he's not swinging. And that's the main key 
tip here when you're resetting the ball you're just catching the ball out in front blocking it just blocking and this forces a low contact on my side so when we're resetting the ball or when we're off the line off the non-volley zone we just want to hit something neutralizing so something that is dropping down um, and forcing me to have a low contact so Craig did a really good job here so here um, I volley this ball out of the air and you know Craig has made his way up to non volley zone and Joe is coming behind him too so here is when the kind of the second mistake happens here I, I force a good ball this is kind of this is a forced air definitely it's a low ball to Craig here and you know we all pop up the ball at times this is a tough position it's a really low now Craig maybe could have let this bounce, but he's really good and confident in his volley dinks. This one just happened to pop up a little bit. Now watch this paddle position again. What am I going to do? I'm going to attack it. All right. So obviously we see here me drop my paddle head down. So when you see that again, get ready to defend. If you are the person in front of the player that's dropping their paddle head and receiving the ball, in this case, Joe, make sure you're ready to defend. And where do I go again? I go to the dominant side. So here you can see in this angle, Joe is a little bit shifted over to the middle. And I kind of see a little gap between the sideline and his right foot. So that's another reason I kind of choose to go here. He slightly pops it up and then I lean in and go for another swing and volley down the line. Now this is a really tough shot it's a close shot threading the needle there on the sideline but again I think Joe's a little bit out of position here as that ball is coming cross court from Craig I think he should shade over a little bit towards the sideline and this is just following the ball um, as the ball is coming you know closer towards one sideline we generally want to shift over so a little bit of space at a high level that could be you know just enough for someone to take a ball down the sideline there all right so hopefully this video was very helpful to you if you like this kind of content leave us a comment below and tell us you liked it and maybe some other ideas of things that you'd like to see again if you want more tips go ahead and check out our website at brionispickleball.com thanks for watching again and we'll see you in the next one